He uh, joins us now on the show. Victor, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you today? I'm doing well, guys. How are you? We're doing great. Give me the thing that stood out to you most uh, with the weekend's games. What's the thing that you'll go, wow, that, I can't believe that happened? Well, I think we got to go with the Tennessee Titans. I, I, I think I think we all knew that they were a good team. I didn't think that they'd come out and, and punch Baltimore in the face like that in the mouth and Baltimore not respond. I think that was the biggest thing I took away from that. And aside from, you know, Derrick Henry's just a fully grown man <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, but I was surprised by the Tennessee Titans, especially defensively in the secondary. They were almost glued to the hip to a lot of those receivers on crucial third downs where they needed to make a big play. That secondary was all over it, and, uh, and and as well as that defensive line that was getting after Lamar Jackson pretty well. I know he, Lamar still did some pretty good things statistically, but when you watch the game, that defensive line was coming up with big play after big play when they needed it the most. Victor, you know from the years we've spoken, I'm a, I'm a bit of a child, so I, I wonder about this. So Derrick Henry has been unstoppable. He has that huge mm -hmm. braid coming out of his helmet. <laughs> Are you allowed to tackle him by grabbing the braid? Is that legal? I believe it is legal now. I think uh, I think the rule is um, that that is a part of the jersey. That if you wear your braids outside of the helmet, that that is indeed part of the jersey. So why wouldn't somebody it yank it out of his head? To well, slow that's him a down. great question. I don't think anyone's had the opportunity to even get that <laughs> close. Plus, <laughs> half the defenders, especially DBs, might have to scale his body just to get to the braid. Um, did you, Vic? Did you think that? Green Bay was on their way to throwing it away in the fourth quarter last night? I, I did. I think there was portions of the game where you're just like, man, they're not scoring any points, or they look stagnant, or they look like they're just not equipped enough to put points on the board in crucial situations for them to win the ball game. But, you know, then Aaron Rodgers just being Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams just being the beast that he is. And those two, I think the connection that those two have specifically is just um, it's just remarkable. And, and it's just a connection that, you know, you only see with special guys. And I think they have that. And I think, um, and I think it'll pay dividends for them. Now, we were just having a conversation shifting over to the, the, the Kansas City-Houston game. We all had a problem with the fake punt. And obviously, looking back at it, that was a major momentum mover. But when a team scores on six straight possessions and wins by 20, is it fair to say that even without the fake punt, that eventually Kansas City would have gotten together and won the game anyway? Yeah, I think so. I, I think, uh, I mean, I remember watching this game, and, you know, once Houston went up 24 zip, I was like, oh, man, Kansas City just let this one go. I thought, you know, Houston was going to go on to score 30, 40 points, and this is going to get out of hand real quick. But you see Patrick Mahomes, one big play, and then it seemed like the whole team just started yelling in excitement, and then they scored on that drive, and everybody, like, the complete energy just shifted. And it was only 24-7, and you just felt like, okay, here they come, but not like that. I didn't think they'd score 28 points in a quarter and then go on to score 51. Like, I just didn't think it was going to be that type of turnaround, but um, yeah, I just thought, and then on the other hand, I just thought Deshaun Watson should have did more to kind of tell Bill O'Brien, like, look, we need to go for it here. We need to change the energy. We need to shift the momentum in some way, shape, or form, and I just, and I think they missed the boat on trying to, trying to shift that momentum throughout the course of that second quarter. Victor, is that offense as Turbo as it seems to us outsiders. I mean, you've played the game. Does, does, is it as un unstoppable as it looks? Yes, mainly for two things, right? Like, okay, you have the simple drop back pass situations that Patrick Mahomes excels at, just dropping, you know, three step, five step drop, getting the ball out, timely passes. You, ha they have that part of their offense, right? Then you have the intangible part of their offense, which is Patrick Mahomes when the play breaks down and he has the ball for five, six, and seven seconds after the initial snap, that's what you have to worry about because that team does better than anyone is just find little nuances within the defense to be open, and Patrick Mahomes has always got his eyes downfield trying to find the open guy. So if you can find that little wrinkle or that little space between the defense, nine times out of ten, Patrick Mahomes is going to find you. And then just when you you think you've got all these receivers covered, Patrick Mahomes is going to run for a couple first downs and do it with his legs. So the, you literally, you can dial up any defense you want. It's hard to stop all of those different options. Victor, is the game changing away to where it's becoming more of a ground and pound type game? Like we heard Dave Gettleman say that I know it's a passing league, but you got to run the football. And the stats in the postseason have really shown the success of running the football. Are we starting to see a change a little bit in the way offenses are run in this league? 
Yeah, I think so. I think I think it's a little bit of a change, and I don't think it's a change. I think it's going back to like old school, just running the ball. And if you look at a lot of the successful teams that have won championships, they've had a significant running game, or they've had a running game that is substantial enough to keep defenses honest. And, and you know, that's one thing. As a receiver, you love a good running game because as long as that running game is going and they're getting five, six, seven yards a clip, that play action pass is going to be wide open for you. So I used to love playing with guys like Ahmad Bradshaw and Brandon Jacobs and guys like that because they really take the pressure off of you defensively when you want to go play action pass and you want to attack teams downfield. A great running game is always going to be beneficial to your offense, for sure. What did you think of the Joe Judge presser? Were you were you motivated by the spiel, or did you think it was sort of like a little formulaic? I was I was a little motivated, man. I was ready to put some pads on, put a helmet on. I was like, let's go, <laughs> let's go do this, coach. I'm I'm convinced. But obviously, he's he's got to go out there and do it. I know one thing that uh that I heard that I know players probably weren't too fond of is him having you know live practices and they're going to be hitting in practice and things like that. I know Saquon was like, Ugh! like what? <laughs> Hold on. Isn't that illegal though? I mean, there's only so many times you could do that. I hope so. It, it, it needs to be illegal if it's not already because I know guys do not want to be hitting during practice. But there is something to be said for guys that, you know, you know, when you go through training camp and you go through the preseason and you go, you know, a lot of these guys don't play now. and a lot of, So you're really not hitting anybody for a month and a half from the time you put your pads on to game one. So, right. like, I, there is something to be said about guys, you know, getting used to tackling earlier on in the preseason, but I don't know if they need to be tackling in practice throughout training camp and things of that nature. I don't know how he's going to scale that, but we'll see. All right, before we let you go, who's playing in the Super Bowl? Oh, man, I got the Green Bay Packers against the Kansas City Chiefs. How do you, how do the Packers get by San Francisco, though? I do I'm not just, like that matchup for them. I, 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 don't, I don't like it either, but I just something about Aaron Rodgers, just, I'm, I'm just convinced. It's been nine years. If, if he does, in fact, win, it'll be a nine-year gap between the last time he was in the Super Bowl to this time. And I just think the football gods are rewarding kind of the OGs out here in the NFL, and I think it's his time again. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you, Victor. No problem, guys. Take care of my guy, Peter, all right? Oh, always. He's the reason. All right, good. All right, good. <laughs> nice talking to you guys. Later, dude. Uh, the playoff recap brought to you by 2 by Lunch.